Hi everybody! I wanted to do a short lard rendering video for you. Um, this should be one of my shortest videos that I've made. So uh, hold on to your hats, here we go. You have a couple options when it comes to actually rendering the fat down. Uh, go ahead and get your fat, whatever it is. If it's bagged up like this, great. If it's off of um, pieces of pork that you've saved, that's great too. Um, the option I'm going to be using today is my really large cast iron skillet in the oven. You can also use a crock pot or a large pot on the stove. It all works basically the same way. Low and slow heat melts the the uh, fat into lard. You can do it the same way for beef. So just go ahead and put it in there. Some people chop it up, but I don't because I usually get bored halfway through and I start chopping it as it's melting. Okay, so I had two bags of lard and it filled this pan a little too high, so I'm going to go ahead and put some in my crock pot also. Um, it, it's all just the same. You just fill up your crock pot and uh, you're going to turn it on and I'm going to turn mine on high. lid on all the way up to high and then this one is going to go into the oven and I'll update you when I have the little update. The oven's at 250 um, because we have something else in there and I think that's going to be the perfect size um, temperature. So we'll be able to compare um, oven rendering and crock pot rendering. It's been a couple hours and you can see that my crock pot is hot and uh, this is how my lard is doing. You may be able to see that there's just a little bit of liquid down in there and it's just gonna keep going. It's gonna take many hours. So let's check on the uh, oven one if I can get this to focus again. There you go. The one in the oven is doing about the same thing. It's starting to get glistening and it's gonna, there's a little bit of moisture on the bottom, and it's gonna take several hours. So it's been probably about six hours now, so let's go ahead and check on our rendering lard. So I'll go ahead and open this up. This is the crock pot one. Definitely bubbling and boiling at this stage. Now it is on high, I'm gonna turn it to low because it's getting late. I like to take a potato masher and do what I can to just press it down in. Kind of chop it up. But don't get any of this on you. So it's boiling fat. Later we'll get all the drippings out. Let's go ahead and check on the one in the oven. As you can see, it's bubbling and boiling also. I had to put it on a lower rack because I was cooking some other stuff. I can just move that real quick. Now that I've got that rack out of the way, I can see about pressing some of these down. And as you can see, it's pretty full. So overnight, what I'll probably do is I'll grab some tongs and put some of these into the crock pot. And then I'll turn the heat down lower so that it can continue during the night. Okay, I have reduced the amount in my cast iron in my oven and uh, turned it down to 170 which is as low as I can get it. Fold this up a little bit from the extra from the oven and now I'm just gonna it's on low put the lid back on and I'll just come back either later tonight to double check or 
early in the morning. Um, and yeah, I'll update you when it gets to that point. Good morning, everybody. This morning, this is what I'm finding. It's still continuing to render. Um, and I discovered that my oven turns off after a certain amount of time. So I had to turn it back on this morning. So this is not as cooked as, uh, as the crock pot one. So I'm just going to let it continue to render and uh, I'll keep you updated. So I'm deciding to skim some of the uh, chunks out and separate it from the liquid so that I can combine both the oven and the crock pot into one container. So I've got a sieve. I'll just scoop it up and let it go through. Got my oven pan up on top. I'm just going to scoop the solids into here because I've got liquid fat over here. And then the crock pot will keep going. And drain it down. Now that you've got the chunks in here continuing to cook down and you've got some filtered fat, you can start getting it into jars. Wide mouth, I, I will say it's easier, but I'm all out of wide mouth, except for one. I'm going to fill it up pretty much as far as you'd like. And as it cools, it'll turn into a lighter color. So I've got about half the batch done. The other half is still in the crock pot. So get them into jars, and then while they're still hot and liquid, go ahead and set the lids on top. If you're not comfortable. No, it's not honey. It's fat. It's lard. So if you're not comfortable reusing lids for canning, you can still save them and reuse them for this. And then just just kind of like canning, spin them on and tighten it just a little bit and then it'll suck the it'll heat the air enough that it comes out and um, I will end up storing half of these on the shelves and half of them in the fridge because I'd like the other half to last maybe six to nine maybe even 12 months down the road but we'll see how many jars I get when I'm done. So I finished rendering my lard and you can see that there are lots of different colors on this side there's um, the hottest lard that's just recently poured in moving down the line to the coolest lard this one's been outside so it's really nice and cold and uh, you can see on the inside that's pretty solid Let's see if we can get a really good view of it being nice and solid You'll have to take my word for it. It's nice and solid. Ta-da! And you can use it in place of Crisco or anything. Now at the end, you'll be left with cracklings. Don't throw those out. Keep them. Stick them in a jar or in the freezer. You can use them for baking. Um, I hear they're great in cornbread, but honestly, I'll probably just pull a few out um, and cook with them as my fat plus some extra flavor in whatever I'm cooking. Altogether, I got about 16 pints of lard. Some are in quart jars, some are in pints, but uh, equivalent to about 16 pints of lard plus uh, two jars of cracklings, which I'm really happy with. Um, 16 pints will probably last us a long time. Um, if you use a pint every two weeks, you know, you can do the math there because uh, they don't pay me enough to do the math, but it'll last us a really long time. 
thanks for coming along and um, seeing how I render lard. You can do tallow the exact same way. I will warn you, tallow smells a little bit more fragrant in the house, so um, consider maybe doing it on a day that you can have the window open. I'm not a big fan of tallow smell, but the pork fat just basically smells like bacon. So, yeah. Thanks for coming along. Come see me on Instagram at Tracy's Homestead with an EY. And, yeah. Thanks. Bye.